A bit of backstory. I met him in February, we became official in March. So we've been dating for about five months. It started great, in the beginning we were just getting to know each other and having a lot of fun. He hung out with me and sometimes my friends, going out or staying home. But it quickly devolved. At the time, I will admit I was drinking too often. I work in the service industry, and anyone who does as well knows there can be a lot of drinking involved. I definitely became way too comfortable with the frequency amount I was drinking. But he joined me the whole time and we had some good nights together. I thought things were good and well. I mean, I had talked to him about cutting down and I was starting to do so because I felt like it would be good for me. And he agreed. I went to the beach in May with some girlfriends and mentioned we had one round of mimosas in the morning and that was it. And that was the first time that he tried to break up with me because he said I wasn't controlling my drinking and I said I didn't feel comfortable talking about it then and that I would rather talk in person. He refused and said, we are talking now. It was shocking because he had never spoken to me like that before. When I tried to stand my ground is when he said, fine, we're breaking up. I ended up begging him not to and he made me promise I would go to therapy. I promised him anything I could to get him not to end the relationship, which I have never done in my life. It was slightly traumatic for me within the relationship, honestly. In conversation after this incident, he stopped wanting to do anything or go anywhere with me where my drinking could be involved, almost like a switch had flipped. Any resistance on my part was not met well. He even brought up my dad being an alcoholic to help his point when we started fighting and borderline calling me an alcoholic, which hurt a lot that he would bring a sensitive family issue into it when he has only known me a couple of months. Shortly after that, I quickly changed my habits and cut out drinking altogether for the next month. It had become a sensitive topic and I wanted to appease him. He also told me I was not allowed to go to clubs with my friends within this relationship when I mentioned I wanted to go out at the end of the month for my friend's birthday. I felt forced to say okay, but I was deeply unsettled. Things like this continued to happen. In June, his best friend came to visit him and they had fun pretty heavily, drinking all day while I was at work. Which was fine with me. I want him to have fun and I feel no need to control what he does. We talked about hanging out when I got off and I said I would make them a nice dinner. So that's what I did. While I was waiting for them to get back, I figured I hadn't drank for a month and he was already drinking all day with his friend and we agreed drinking on weekends was okay, even though I hadn't been so I decided to pour myself a glass of wine while I was prepping food. When he came home with his friend, as soon as he saw my glass, all hell broke loose. It snowballed quickly, and it ended in him smashing my glass in the kitchen sink and roughly grabbing my roommate's dog by the collar to get him out of their way. We broke up for two weeks, but we got back together after. We both said we would go to therapy. Since then, I have continued with cutting out most of my previous drinking and have been feeling good. I've even lost 10 pounds. Pretty much only on social occasions like my best friend's birthday or a wedding I went to. He continues to say that I'm still always seeking it and looking for an excuse. I don't feel this way at all. The topic of my birthday came up. My friends helped me plan a party this weekend. He let me know a while ago when the topic of drinking came up that alcohol will have no place in our relationship. I said, does that mean you're not coming to my birthday? He said, if you're drinking, then no. He planned a nice day for me on my actual birthday. In the evening, there was a surprise dinner with eight of my friends and a surprise gathering planned at his house after that. My friends helped him plan. He decorated his house for it and everything. At dinner, all of my friends ordered a drink, and I sat at the end of the table feeling weird like I wasn't allowed to have anything. I asked if he wanted to share a drink. He said no. Later, my friends did a birthday cheers for me and poured me a small shot of sake, Japanese wine, not liquor. I did the cheers with them and took it. Immediately after this, he proceeded to shut down, stopped talking, and went on his phone the rest of dinner, even scooting away from the table by the end. He ended up saying we were all going home when the waiter asked what we were doing after, leaving all my friends confused. He left and we all just went back to my place. 
They consoled me and we had our own fun. We haven't spoken in three days since that night. I'll admit I took the seike knowing what would happen. I think I was challenging him in a way and I probably shouldn't have done that. But God, I just don't want to be in a relationship where we tell each other what to do. So in this way, I feel like I may have been the idiot. I knew how he felt and I did it anyway, after everything he planned for me. I think we may have too many differences. He also doesn't like how I prioritize my friends. He says friends come and go, but I disagree. And I love that I have fostered such close ties with my friends. They are like chosen family to me, which he also doesn't believe in. Before I end this, I will say I'm with him because he has been so kind to me. He takes care of me at every turn, and I saw that I could build a life with him. He loves me and cares about my family a lot too. We have so much fun together and we have a great connection. I guess now it feels like the classic, when it's good, it's amazing, but when it's bad, it's bad. TLDR, five month. Relationship with boyfriend, it's been kind of a roller coaster already. He thought I drank too much, so I changed my habits quickly. It has become a no go for him. I had a shot of sake at birthday dinner, and now we haven't talked for three days. I think we have a lot of differences, and I don't know how to see past them now. Now, here are the comments. Comment one. Not the idiot OP, drinking habits are tough to stop, so you've done amazing to achieve what you have. It doesn't sound like you've got the recognition from your partner for this enough. Instead, just further controlling and rules being made. This is your journey, not his. He shouldn't be making this about him. He should be supporting on the sidelines. So, what if you have the odd glass of wine still, or a shot of sake, you know your limits and certainly sound aware of what you're doing. With how proud you sound for yourself, I don't see you slipping back to the heavy drinking from just one glass. We're human. We can let loose every now and then without having the worry of being criticized for it. Well done for taking a stand for yourself, OP. Comment 2. Not the idiot, he is very controlling. I assumed he was maybe the child of an alcoholic, who often have very justifiably negative views about drinking, but that went out the window when he was drinking all day with his friend. Then he also seems to be trying to distance you from your friends. I suspect he has a lot of jealousy issues, thinks if you're drinking, you'll cheat. It's not unreasonable for a partner to be concerned about drinking in someone who has a genetic risk for alcoholism, but this is clearly about more than that. It's about controlling you. Guys like this tend to get more controlling as the relationship goes on. It honestly sounds to me like you should leave him. I don't see things getting better. Comment three. Okay, I stopped reading about halfway through. Guess what is worse than alcoholism? Being stuck in a relationship with a controlling idiot who will honestly eventually break you entirely and keep you there. You have been with this dude five months. After 90 days, the mask falls off. What would that be? May time frame, perhaps? You need therapy and to get away from this monster. Now, for the next story. Okay, okay, so I know how it sounds, but you just gotta listen. In January of this year, I met this dude on Tinder. We'll call him Richard Lull. He seemed super cool and we got along well. Plus, we had a lot in common, so that helped push the conversation along. We had similar trauma, interests, and talked a lot. So we planned a date. Before I continue, I had previously stated on my profile that I am by no means a hookup person. I'm not super sexually active. I found out fast I'm not into that hookup crap, not to mention I wasn't even active until I was 18 due to some past sexual trauma stuff. He knew this. So basically, we went out and it was fun. No awkward energy between us, it was nice. We hung out a few times after, maybe once or twice at my house. One night he spent the night and, well, things got a little heated. I kind of thought at this point we'd keep going out and hope for the best, you know? But anyways, after that, I got pretty much ghosted. And, well, what can you really do after that but then let it go? I mean, I met the dude on Tinder, LMFAO. 
A few months after that, I met my amazing boyfriend who I'm with now, and I pretty much have forgotten about that whole experience. So flash forward a bit more into the year, around mid-June, I applied to an unnamed beauty store. I'm an ex-cosplayer, kinda. I've been into SFX and makeup since I was young, plus I've had more than enough practice dyeing my own hair. This was like the perfect job for me. The interview went so well, too. The manager was so cool. She was my age. We had similar music tastes and likes, and we talked for almost a whole hour and a half during that interview. I felt good about it when I left, and sure enough, I got the job. I couldn't have been more excited. My co-workers were all cool as hell and super nice, and I really liked the location. Anyways, my first day rolled around, and I'm in the back with my manager training. We'll call her Candace, we had been bonding over our boyfriends, and she really seems to like him. She starts telling me about this date they had just gone on recently where they dressed up and such, and she goes to show me a picture of them. Super cute, pin-up style dress, she's looking so slay. And then I see him. It was Richard. At first I thought, hey, benefit of the doubt, she probably met him after, right? Yeah, okay. So I don't say anything. As the day goes on, she tells me more things. She goes on about how she lives with him, their pets, and then she tells me he got her an Xbox for Christmas. Sounds sweet enough, right? No. I met him in January of this year, Christmas was prior, and I can distinctly remember him telling me about getting his roommate an Xbox for Christmas. Poop! It's my very first day at this place and I just found out my manager's boyfriend cheated on her with me. Now listen, I am a major girl's girl. I kept thinking if I was in this situation, I'd 100% want the girl who knew to tell me. Who wouldn't? But it's my first day here. I'm spooked about saying anything. But I couldn't not tell her. She seemed so cool. I recognize him from Tinder, I tell her. She looks at me and then back at her phone and says, Yeah, he had it before we started dating. If some girl told me she recognized my boyfriend from Tinder, I'd definitely ask him, Hey, do you know this chick? No way she wouldn't, right? Right. That night, she went home and showed him my TikTok and asked him, Hey, bro, what's up? So the next day, second day of work at this job, I come in and Candace immediately asks me to shut the door behind me and that she needs to talk to me about something. Of course, I know exactly what that is. I sit down and she starts to tell me that she showed him my TikTok account and told him exactly what I told her. She tells me he confessed to seeing me sometime last year, using protection when he did not and that being that. A quick hookup. No way was I letting this prick off easy. None of that was true. So I told her everything. That it was in fact this year he did not use protection. I am allergic to latex and wasn't sexually active, I had no condoms, birth control was it, and that it was not a hookup. This man pretended to be single, stayed the night at my house, and said that Candace was his roommate. The look on her face was awful. I genuinely felt so bad having to tell her this poop, but she needed to know. As much as I hated the situation, telling her was the only thing I felt like I could do in this situation. Candace had been so cool to me. I couldn't lie to her like that. Candace ended up leaving the store after that. The location I was at was a mall location. Guess who also worked in the mall? Yup, Richard. Hell yeah, she's gonna go kick his ass, right? An hour later, Candace comes back, telling me that she bought him a journal. Because he has an addiction? What? I... You bought him a journal? Girl... Within the next few days, I had found out from my co-workers that this was not the first time she had found out he was cheating. She basically told us that because he didn't peak in high school, he was obsessed with attention from these women that he didn't get prior. What a lame excuse. Anyways, Candace's attitude towards me changed almost immediately after that. She became cold and distant. At first, I understood why. How could you not be upset in this situation? But then she started cutting my hours, scheduling me seven hour work weeks, basically completely stopped training me, poop talked me to my coworkers, and actively tried to keep them from talking to me at work. It was relentless. 
And all this time, she would not shut up about Richard, sharing personal ass poop and trauma that no one should be talking about, let alone the partner you trusted that info with. She couldn't handle anyone talking about their own happy relationship. She would always one up with something Richard had done. Richard took me out to lunch, he's so sweet. Richard likes this TV show. Look at this picture of Richard, Omgi, Richard, 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 yeah. Not to mention, this man has kids? What? She tells us all the time how she's trying to make him a better dad. Like, girl, this man does not want to be saved. So not only does it turn out Candace is a bad person, but also a horrible manager. She would regularly leave early and have one of us clock her out, would tell us how she didn't want to do shipping, and would leave tons and tons of work for us. Not to mention the co-worker who actually trained me constantly got stuck doing her work for her. She constantly had weird, creepy, homophobic poop to say to my co-worker, who just so happened to be in a gay relationship. She body shamed us, calling one girl flat and calling me a bigger girl to our co-workers. I'm so sorry, I have to cut this into two parts. Part two will be up immediately. Now here are the comments. Comment one, girl, get another job. This Candace is toxic and could even potentially accuse you of something serious like theft or violence. Unlikely, but not impossible. I'd run fast from this place. Comment two, IDK if you saw PT too, but I called my district manager about her and all my coworkers backed me up about her behavior, so she did in fact get fired. Thank God, thank you though, love ya. If you liked this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.